few things scream summertime quite like a juicy slice of watermelon. But these days, it's nearly impossible to find a slice in the store that has those characteristic black spots of seed spitting contests of days past. In fact, when I went looking for a watermelon, I could not find one with seeds in my local store. But the story behind how you get these seedless watermelons is actually a pretty cool genetic trick. So let's talk about the basics of watermelon genetics. Unlike humans, which have 23 pairs of chromosomes, watermelons only have 11. But like humans, watermelons are diploid. This means that they have one copy of each chromosome from their mother and one copy of each chromosome from their father. During normal cell division, each cell in your body copies its set of chromosomes and passes an identical set onto each progeny cell. This is done in a process known as mitosis, which I talked about in this video. However, in order for you to only get one copy of each chromosome from your mother and one from your father, the cells in their body which go on to create sperm and eggs, their germ cells, have to undergo a slightly different process known as meiosis, in which a diploid cell splits into two haploid daughter cells, each of which contains only one copy of each chromosome. That way, when the egg from your mother and sperm from your father combine, they're each contributing just one copy of each chromosome, so that you have two copies of each and are once again diploid. So now back to watermelon seeds. Watermelon seeds form their hard black shell coat or testa after successful fertilization. So to prevent this and get seedless watermelons, farmers mess with the number of chromosomes that each watermelon has, therefore preventing successful fertilization and preventing correct seed formation. How? Let's start with the female parent plant. Young watermelon seedlings are treated with a chemical called colchicine, which prevents proper splitting of the chromosomes during mitosis and results in plants that are tetraploid, containing four copies of each chromosome. When these tetraploid plants undergo meiosis, instead of creating a haploid daughter cell with only one copy of each chromosome, they actually create a diploid daughter cell with two copies of each chromosome. If you cross this with haploid pollen from a normal watermelon plant, you wind up with triploid watermelon progeny. And watermelons do not like having three copies of each chromosome. These three copies of each chromosome can't properly separate during meiosis, leading to unsuccessful fertilization, leading to watermelon plants that can't properly produce seeds. Now I think that's a pretty tasty genetic trick. Go forth, do science.